Lake Habaniya is about 60 miles west of Baghdad in Iraq's Anbar province. Just northwest of the lake is the town of Ramadi. Freelance journalist David Axe visited there earlier this year while embedded with a battalion of Navy Seabees. He began the trip to Ramadi from the U.S. Air Base at Al Takedim, just across the lake. In late January, I was uh, at Al Takedim Air Base in, in western Iraq, uh, paying a visit to a, a Navy construction battalion there. And uh, I was slated next to, to visit a detachment from the same battalion, that's uh, Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 133 from Gulfport, Mississippi. I was slated to visit another detachment in nearby um, Aramadi, which is uh, one of the major insurgent strongholds in, in western Iraq, in Al, Al, Al Anbar province in western Iraq and has several U.S. bases. Uh, the biggest they is referred to as Ramadi Base. And I was, um, it was due to, to travel there um, by air from uh, Takedam to Ramadi, but the, uh, the weather was so bad that the air travel got canceled, and I ended up hitching a ride with an Army engineer unit that had a, a convoy run to, uh, to Ramadi. But uh, traveling by road from uh, Takedam to Ramadi is uh, neither easy nor particularly safe. Um, been a lot of IED attacks on the roads between uh, Takedim and Ramadi. So to get from Takedim to, um, to Ramadi, we travel only at night uh, because insurgents tend, insurgent activity tends to, to, to drop uh, at night. They don't like operating at night. Um, and we would travel with uh, all lights extinguished um, and uh, navigating only by uh, night vision goggles. So it's, a, it's an eerie kind of experience, you know, speeding down these, these barren back roads at, at unsafe speeds, uh, seeing nothing but pitch black. I mean, the drivers can see, the, the vehicle commanders can see, but uh, I couldn't see a thing. Here we go. Up, up, up. I hooked up with a detachment from uh, NMCB-133, the, the CB battalion that has its main group at, at Takedim. So I, I met up with the Ramadi detachment, and they were actually just wrapping up a lot of small projects, well, a lot of small projects and one big project there at, at um, the, main, the main U.S. base in Ramadi. The biggest project at Ramadi was building a fortified dining hall. Uh, there had been problems with... Um, insurgents attacking dining facilities in Iraq. Uh, most notably, back in late 2004, a suicide bomber got into a, a dining hall in Mosul and uh, blew himself up and killed, I think, around two dozen U.S. and uh, coalition um, personnel. And since then, there's been an effort in the more dangerous areas of Iraq to, uh, to, tough, to toughen up the, uh, the dining facilities. So especially in a place like Ramadi, where there's still a lot of mortar attacks from the surrounding areas. So the CBs, they scrapped the existing dining hall, which would generally, uh, most dining halls in Iraq are generally just big rooms, single big rooms, everybody packs into the room. Obviously, if, you know, if, if an attack hits a mortar round or a bomber hits that packed room, you're going to have a lot of casualties. So what they did is they, they built a new facility that has, several crisscrossing narrow hallways so you can't see too many people in one area. We're here in Juxon City, Ramadi. We're building a hardened DFAC facility which allows us to have a safe location to eat in the event that we take IDF. You, what is IDF? IDF would be indirect fire. Uh, insurgents like to uh, drop mortars on us every now and then. So we have a safe place where we can keep us to, so we eat chow and uh, they have to worry about it too much. How often does that happen, IDF? It's, it's sporadic throughout the weeks. Some days you get one or two during the day. Sometimes you won't have them, uh, maybe one or two a week. So it all depends on the, the situation we have. And uh, what was involved in making a hardened defect? What we're doing, we're taking a HESCO barrier, which is basically a, uh, a dirt-filled barrier, which provides us a solid wall in case we take any kind of fire. Um, we put a, a truss roof on top, which is layered with soil as well, which would take a roof hit. And we cover it with the normal building, so you can't really tell what it's made out of. 
and uh, the dirt itself and the different measures we put, different uh, structural beams we have will we'll take a hit from it. So tell us again, Chief Romero, why this facility is even being built in the first place. What precipitated this? Uh, I believe it was the different attacks and different mess halls they've had throughout the theater. If uh, you have IDF dropping all over the camp, uh, you need to have some place to, to be safe to eat, uh, where you have, wherever you have a, a group of personnel. Uh, trying to have a, a big formation is a no-no out here. So when you have three, four hundred people eating at one time, you have a safe place to do it. And these walls are filled with HESCO barriers, which are wire mesh and canvas uh, pillars full of dirt. Yes, sir. And so if a round were to hit the wall and destroy a barrier, you would have to replace it? You would, the barriers are designed that you can go ahead and remove one section of the barrier, mm -hmm. put one back in and go ahead and refill it. That way you wouldn't have to destroy your whole building and try to fix one spot. Huh. And you say that as many as, how many people have breakfast here every morning? Several thousand. About 1,000 have breakfast in this facility here mm -hmm. in the morning. And, and during the uh, lunch and dinner times, it, it goes up. Mm 